So now I invite Dr. Atik to talk to us about how to assess a patient plan for Baker surgery. For giving me this wonderful opportunity to be a part of your uh, IC. So this is just a continuation of what uh, Sir has uh, spoken. So surgical results alone don't give satisfaction to the patient. Like you do a cataract surgery, you, you feel thrilled, amazed, patient is 6'6", six, six, N6. Six. That is actually not what the patient is looking for to be happy at the end of uh, surgery. So a thorough analysis of the patient before surgery is vital for the patient to feel holistically good and to feel happy after surgery. At times, you need to take care of the attender more than the patient for the patient to be happy post-surgery. So to begin with, creating a rapport with the patient and the family and to ensure that the anxiety level of the patient comes down before any procedure is very important. At times, it's a monotonous process where you see a patient for cataract, you go through the same story again and again and again. And when in a busy OP schedule, we may at times skip it. But it is not enough. We need, for every patient need to be considered as a new patient and we need to spend time with the patient. This, this helps in reducing mortality, morbidity during surgery and to avoid case cancellations and surgical delays. <clears throat> this is one of the most important prognostic factors for success in daycare surgery. Again, success, I don't mean by clinical success, overall success of the patient after surgery or satisfaction post-surgery. Another important, of course, we need to do this pre-surgery evaluation to safeguard us also. So who is fit for daycare surgery? There are certain clause and classifications. One which is usually followed is the American Society of Anesthesiologist uh, status. Grade 1 and grade 2, they are considered as fit for daycare surgery. Grade 1, I mean, grade 1 is a normal patient without any comorbids. Grade 2, say for example, a diabetic or a hypertensive under good control comes under grade 2. Grade 3 is patient with next level uh, disease. Grade 4 goes to diseases like maybe nephropathy or neuropathy, patients like that who are having uh, systemic, uh, severe systemic diseases. So uh, who is fit for daycare surgery? Just age is definitely not a criteria to say fitness. We are seeing 80 year old, 70 year old marathon runners and people having MI at 40 years of age. So age is no longer considered as a criteria for daycare surgery. BMI, BMI of less than 40 as long as comorbids are well controlled is a very good prognostic factor. Even uh, 40 to 50 is a, a gray zone where uh, we are not very sure about it. It has to be considered on a special specific case to case basis. Patients with BMI more than 50 of course are with higher risk of getting peri and post-operative complications. So thorough examination of the patient is essential and each patient should be considered on a case-to-case -case basis. So, <clears throat> to begin with history, take spend some time and a detailed history needs to be taken, uh, taken from the patient. Comorbids, diabetes, hypertension, COPD, of course, off late, we are seeing a lot of lung related issues due to the past three years of uh, mess all of us went through. Seizure disorder, CVA, thyroid disorder history to be taken. Off late, anesthetists are more fond of this uh, concept called as effort tolerance. They call it METS 1 to 8. So what they mean by effort tolerance is uh, in some places we find the anesthetist in a second floor or first floor. And if a patient is able to comfortably climb two floors of stairs, come to the anesthetist and sit and talk, they call it as effort tolerance being good. That is METS more than four. So that is enough for a that that is a very important prognostic factor they feel to assess for a patient who is fit for daycare surgery. METS above four is amazing, but METS four minimum is needed. So a person who is able to complete two stairs, I mean a two staircase climbing, is considered to be reasonably good for daycare surgery. Medication history should be taken, previous hospitalization history, anaphylaxis history as sir pointed out is something that is extremely important. Allergy history is very important that needs to be taken during our uh, history. Medication history, this again is a big gray area. When to stop blood thinners? Of course, when we do cataract surgery, uh, many feel that this is clear corneal surgery. We don't incise the sclera, there is no bleeding encountered. But unfortunately, it is in those cases where we end up with the iridodialysis, lot of bleeding and then we cut a sorry figure to the patient post-surgery. 
So always safer to stop blood uh, thinners. If it is warfarin, at least five days is needed. No point in stopping it uh, 24 hours or uh, uh, 48 hours prior to surgery. If we are not sure about it, we can talk to the cardiologist, get an opinion, find out how long this that specific uh, blood thinner can be stopped. When to resume? Again, if there is low risk of bleeding, it can be started the very next day. A certain procedures like maybe oculoplastic procedures or any iris repair or a retinal surgery done when we are expecting uh, bleeding to happen, it's always safer to start two to three uh, days post surgery. General examination, detailed general examination is very important. Airway examination is mandatory for all patients because in case of any medical emergency that needs to be assessed. And <coughs> hydration status, pallor, clubbing, cyanosis and pedal edema should be examined. And history and examination if the patient will be able to lie down also should be taken because most, surg most of our surgeries require patient to lie down flat for at least 10 to 15 minutes. Systemic examination, a complete cardiovascular, respiratory, abdominal examination including genitalia and CNS examination needs to be done. This is something very important. For all surgeries, at least a basic blood workup is mandate which will help us to save our skins in case there is a medical legal issue or any emergency post-surgery. A basic hemoglobin, total count, differential count, sugars, urea creatinine and ECG is mandate for all patients, whatever be the surgery that is done. And in case the patient has any issues, chest x-ray, echo, coagulation profile, in case we are expecting bleeding during surgery and serology for our safety and our staff safety is very important. How expensive are these tests? Most of our surgeries we charge 25, 30,000 and above and these basic tests with the nominal profit margin will hardly cost us 1,500 to 1,600. So this the patient will be willing provided we are able to talk to the patient and tell them that it, this is for their benefit and not for us. They will be more than willing to spend it. Expert opinion is always essential. A good examination by a cardiologist, pulmonologist, endocrine or an anesthesiologist on a case-to-case -case basis is needed. Separate consent for anesthesia and surgical consent should be taken. This again is mandatory. This is something which we follow in our place. Any physician coming, this form is given a quick checklist for them and they are, uh, I mean, and they are required to fill up this uh, details and say whether the patient has any risk factors moderate risk, mild risk or how the surgery can be done or planned for the patient. <clears throat> Normally there is a slight aversion between anesthetist and any surgeon. We feel they are our enemies but unfortunately they are not. They are only trying to save us and help us give good results to the patient. Fear of losing our patient to our neighbor in case the, we suggest these tests or tell them to get a physician evaluation done is a myth. It is not ideal to just take up a patient and go ahead with surgery and try to assessments by ourselves. It is always safer to be a king in ophthalmology and live life king safe rather than be a jack in anesthesiology and then uh, become a laughing stock in case an issue arises. So let us stick what we know best. Physicians and anesthetists are only our saviors, our, our saviors for us and our patients and not our enemies. Thank you so much. Thank you sir for this wonderful opportunity.